Okay, my name is Solomon Rath, and uh, I'm originally from Stanley Mission, Saskatchewan. And I started university here in 1973, really age, mm-hmm. and uh, as a student. And I started working for SIFC in 1984 as a session lecturer, and came on full time in '86. And I've been on here since as an instructor. And throughout the, those years, we've run into, like I've been teaching Cree and we've had to make our own resources as we went through the years so that because there was nothing to work with when we started mm-hmm. you know, there was no textbook to work with and my mentor and friend uh, Jane Okamazes wrote uh, a book Cree Language of the Plains which we were able to use in introductory classes and uh, I contributed to the workbook on that because of uh, the exercises that I was doing so so she put me in there as part of a co-author for that one, and then she went back and re-edited her textbook and got my name off there, which is a good thing, you know, because it's her work. Mm-hmm. And so we've had to develop materials all along, and I've been doing uh, the senior level classes in Cree all these years. And as such, I've had to create my own materials, and this is the outcome of that work is this Woods Cree Stories Nehila Achimuna Woods Cree Stories and uh, what it is it begins with a traditional traditional story of uh, Wisaki Chaka and the Startlers just to show what lessons there are there are in stories uh, traditional stories so like the Startlers story tells you the sacredness of names and how you protect your names away from strangers otherwise something bad will happen so that's what it is and the rest of the stories are a series of a is a collection of stories that I wrote for classes like uh, like Cree 202, Cree 203 the, the intermediate level classes and the senior level classes I've had to develop materials for those things so we students can work with them and so, uh, so that's what the outcome of this is book. Basically, we had to create materials for our language classes, uh, and uh, in the introductory classes, we've had this book, Matinee Hiawewin, and this is an introductory Cree book for introductory Cree, of course, <laughs> uh, Cree 100, Cree 101, and it's a series of grammar explanations and exercises to help with the retention of the Cree language and that was published in two years ago I think something like that or four years ago that was getting old and this is used here at the university and it's also used in other universities as it turns out this was in 2016-2014 so Martin A. Hewewen and it supplements Gino Gamasis' book uh, Language of the Plains in a way and so because we need language materials at all times as we create materials in notice the wheel behind you. That's for language retention. We call it Cree wheel. And you spin the wheel like that, and it comes to a uh, uh, it comes to um, a topic, and then you, you ask questions about the, that topic with the students, and everything's prepared. But the other thing we do is also uh, I myself do a lot of translation for other words for other people. Uh, Rosanna Deerchild published a book called Calling Down the Sky. It's a book of poetry about residential schools, her mother's experience in residential schools. And so she published that in 2015. And then I met her in Winnipeg and with a friend of mine, and her her friend introduced me to her and her friend said, Solomon, is a person to talk to you about translating your calling down the sky into Cree. So what we did is we published calling down the sky in Cree, the translations in Cree of all the poems that are there. Another thing we do is also help uh, upcoming upcoming uh, scholars in the field uh, wanting to write. I, we get a lot of people wanting to do stuff, stuff in Cree, but they also want to write in Cree standard Roman orthography, the way we write here in Cree, the way we encourage people to write. And uh, one of the things that came up last year was a 16-year-old writing a book 
a poem about bullying. So she wrote a, a poem in English and her mother asked me to translate into Cree. So we have this. This is the outcome of it. Her friend did the audio, the, uh, the illustrations. Okay, she gave more a, a secret. It, 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 and um, from one friend to another, I'll share a secret no one can tell. And it goes on and on and on. And that's her. You know, so she's 17 now, so she's got this going. And uh, she reads in public the English part anyway, because she, she's not a Cree speaker. Her mother's a Cree speaker. So helping her along on her way to publishing. So we encourage young people to do stuff in Cree and help them to go along with that stuff. So this is the kind of things we do. And here we have another book, Plain Cree English Edition, uh, which I was helpful in editing. And uh, this is really neat uh, because it was really stolen words. Colleagues of mine in Saskatoon did the, did the translations, they're fluent speakers, but like most fluent speakers can't write properly in SRO. So what I ended up, I got recruited to go ahead and uh, do some edits on this for the correct spelling for stolen words. So we do that kind of stuff to, to help promote literacy. You know, like our site and Cree Literacy Network, we have a lot of stuff going in there. And so this is so wonderful to see, because when I started here, there was nothing available. <laughs> and so My Heart Fills With Happiness is another one that we did that I was helpful you know, with editing. You know, people ask us to do stuff, we'll do it. Okay. Growing up, we had no access to indigenous literature as such. Uh, grade four, I ran into this. I learned how to read by that time, read English and stuff. And I ran into this, Indian Legends of Canada by Ella Clark. And I thought, wow, great, let me have a look at this. So I had a look at it, and I saw a story here uh, about, you know, a Cree story about the flood. And I read it, and I said, that's not the same version that I remember my mother telling me before going to residential school. So different, you know, but I was happy to find stories about the kind of stories I grew up with. And so that prompted my interest in doing my studies in literature and uh, ended up having my degree in English literature. And uh, meanwhile, educators were out there collecting books, collecting stories like these things. SICC came into being in 1973 and started producing materials in Cree and Dene and Nakoda and Dakota and Lakota. And so we have eight Cree legends, which sort of offset this. It was really nice. And of course, Cree legends, uh, we saw his stories and problem. They're all in English. Cree legends, and so they're all in English. So, and it was like that for the longest time. Everything you, you found about Cree legends was English. And then comes along a wonderful woman called Frida Ahenikou. I met her, well, I fell in love with her, of course, in her work, and she was collecting stuff like this, going back to collecting traditional Indian stories and Cree stories in Cree. So we had Frida Hennecke, Gina Kamas is uh, doing stuff in Cree, and I was riding along the shirt tails as I go along, saw what they did, and uh, so they did this. So Frida has a few publications in Cree, quite uh, quite an extensive collection of Cree textbooks and stuff. So Frida Hennecke is is just wonderful doing that stuff. So we have this situation. We have a lot of people starting to write Cree. A lot of people today are really hesitant to write Cree because they're scared that they might misspell a word or something like that. But that's where we come in. We, we offer a service. If somebody wants to write Cree and asks us to edit, we do edit. We do the editing. And most of the time it's for free, which is good. And uh, so these are resources required by practically everybody who's teaching the language all across Canada. 
and resources are there. Because we still have teachers wanting to know, where can we get resources for our language classes? And I have to re refer them to uh, SICC and their publications. They have an extensive collection of um, language teaching materials and that's what their job is within our government system is to provide materials for language teachers and teachers in general. And strangely enough, though, I found a reluctance of teachers to use their resources for some strange reason. I can't tell you why. You know. So, but, but other than SICC going do stuff, doing stuff like we've lost Frida. She's gone on to the spirit world a few years ago. So there's had to be somebody else that comes in to do this stuff. His daughter, her daughters are doing this stuff at, with that stuff, which is good. But they're not fluent like she was. And, uh, we've got to edit their materials, a lot of stuff. And uh, But people are always wanting stories and materials. My main focus is the stories themselves, the traditional stories, because I find that the traditional stories is where we had our education system all in, in that was our university, basically, you know, because the stories taught us lessons on how to be in this world, how to live in this world, and how to treat one another. And uh, so I concentrate on that, and uh, I, I teach two classes on that. One, one, sto one, one class is called uh, INDL 241, it's Cree Literature and Translation. And so we look at the collected works of uh, our, uh, our stories by... by uh, by ethnologists and ethnographers and all that stuff and anthropologists they've collected stories in, in English most of them in English only one that I know of collected them in, in Cree and now it's Leonard Bloomfield and uh, his Leonard Bloomfield has uh, two collections Sacred Stories of the Sweetgrass Cree and Plains Cree Texts and what he's done is he's collected these stories in Cree and in English, with English translations, and uh, which is really a really wonderful resource. And a lot of people don't know how to read the Cree, though. Okay, so we have. Then, when those partridges came home, what happened to their their children? Dot 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 dot. Something's missing. What's missing? So, if you know how to read Cree, you go over there to read the Cree part. That missing piece is in the Cree part. All the all the dirty pieces are now translated into Cree, you know. So, but they're all in English. They're there in English. Mm. It's really good. So it's a valuable resource, and if you know how to read this thing, then you're you're okay with that, you know. Like he's got two two of these things. So that was good to find. So uh, so that was, he did this in 1931, 1925 is when he did his field work, and he publishes in 1931, I believe. And so this has been around for that long, in 1930, in English and Creek. But it's just been sitting in the library, and nobody's been using it. And, but we use it a lot. And, um, and what's happening is we have this kind of stuff coming into play, Bernice Johnson and Miriam Croner doing this stuff. Uh, I, I calendar of all things, which is really good. And of course, those of us who are taught, or are, those of us who do the language thing, were asked to contribute to this by editing stuff, so, which we did, which is really good. So that's really good. Now here, when we have sled dogs, it's another Cree English thing, English Cree thing, by Miriam again. Whenever Miriam is doing projects, she'll ask her Cree colleagues to please edit her work so we could get the right spelling for that stuff. So that's happening. A lot of people who are doing publications are asking uh, people who know how to write the language properly to do the edits in their books. It's just so essential. Because I imagine myself when I was a kid, I wanted some materials in Cree and there was nothing there. We have this, but I didn't have this in elementary school. I didn't run into this until I was in the university. <laughs> You know, but now kids in the elementary school and high school will have access to these things. They do have access to these in the, in the library, and there, and that is what is so different today is that there are materials available there if people are looking for them.
so all of us speak Cree, and uh, not all of us speak uh, English properly either. So you know, it is really neat because Cree is our first language. We struggle with English a lot of times, and they'll tell stories. Uh, my cousins would tell stories, and my brother and sister would tell stories. And if they want to write the moat, they'll try to write a moat, but they'll get me to edit for the correct spelling. And I know uh, our band, a huge trout. Look at this. Look at the names here. We're talking about my family. So we have my cousin Ida Rat doing the story, and my cousin James Rat illustrating the story. And then we have this. This is fairly new. They just probably we. They just put this out last year. Uh, it is this teaching. What is it called? Yeah, that stuff. And this is the, the flashcards that come with it, with that teaching for languages. SICC put that together. And uh, I'm bragging here because the uh, author not the author, but the artist who did these is my granddaughter. <laughs> so there's a lot of stuff that's been happening uh, over the years, and it's good to see. You know, like I'm ready to retire in a year or so, and it's good to see that people are picking up the interest. And uh, you know, like when I came into this field, there was nothing. Now there's lots of work going on, and uh, I could retire, go to the mountains, and just not worry about it. A lot of people are more are getting more and more interested in our traditional stories. They're realizing our traditional stories are not just there for amusement. They're there to educate us. You know, they're just not a little fairy stories for amusement for the children. They are there to educate the whole, whole system, the whole, the whole people, about life and how to be in life. And so a lot more people are getting interested in these stories, and I'm really happy about that. Uh, we have to retain our languages. It's one of the first things. We have to keep our languages alive. We have to get our stories out there so we could keep our culture alive because our culture has uh, our stories. The culture is in our stories. So we have to bring those things alive again and uh, to make sure that the Cree language survives. And, uh, so we provide language materials for that, for that kind of stuff. Uh, a lot of people think that because Cree was never a written language, we shouldn't be writing. You know, but uh, the way I look at it is, uh, more and more people are losing the language, and a lot of people are are on their own in this world. They don't live in a society like we used to back in the old days, where everybody's circling in the teepee, right? They're all in the same together. Most of us are isolated, and if you want to learn something, you have to do it on your own. And if you have no resources, there's no way you can learn something unless you have resources. So we provide resources by book, hard copy books, or by doing things online. Like we have Cree Literacy Network going online. We have uh, things like this happening in Cree Literacy Network. Things like that on Cree Literacy Network. And we'll have it like that as a hard copy, or and we'll also include the audio for that. Like, Akim and the Hewey Dan. Let's keep on speaking Cree. Akim and the Hewey Dan. Keep on speaking Cree. Let's keep on speaking Cree. In our language is our understanding. Akim and the Hewey Dan. Keep on speaking Cree. Let's keep on speaking Cree. In our language is our identity. Akim and the Hewey Dan. Let's keep on speaking Cree. In our language is our identity. Let's keep on speaking Cree. In our language is our Cree essence. And so we have that situation. That's the same thing there. So we put that online for people to access it. And uh, I posted it on Facebook earlier and somebody said, Can I have a PDF copy of that, please? So <laughs> I sent them this PDF copy of that stuff. So I also run a page on Facebook called Cree language videos where I post videos of language teaching and also the traditional stories that we have. That kind of stuff. The top student 
is uh, is a non-indigenous person, and I was at a language festival three, two years ago, and uh, and we told stories there. My sister and I and uh, and my my nephew we told stories, traditional stories. And we asked if anybody else wanted to tell stories. And my student, who is a non-Indigenous, said, I volunteer. And he ended up telling two stories in Cree, all in Cree, that he had memorized, taking his stuff from this book. You know, And he was really very good at what he was doing. He was memorizing. He, re- he told the stories really well. And my sister and my cousin just looked at me. and. Said, is he a student? Yes, he's my student. <laughs> he's doing this on his own. So, and uh, I said, basically, I just taught him Cree 100 and 101. He took off from there to learn on his own. Because as I was, as I said earlier, if you want to learn, there's nothing stopping you from learning. The resources are there to be able to do that. He wouldn't have been able to do that 30 years ago because there were hardly any resources at that time. But there's lots of resources there today. A person can do that, but he did. It's a touchy issue for a lot of people. You know, mm-hmm. for me, I don't, I don't see anything wrong with it, uh, because most of the people who do that are really respectful of the like, Cree traditions and Cree and Cree ways. They'll 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 be respectful of of of, uh, of the protocols that are involved in that. So with that in mind, there's nothing wrong with it, and uh, it also shows that anybody could do it if they put their mind to it. You know, like uh, my student there, uh, he can actually he can actually do a, cla- a story in Cree, and he can actually also go in and teach uh, basic Cree stuff on his own. And uh, he got criticized by somebody about that, about appropriation and stuff. And I told that person instead of complaining about appropriation, why don't you ask him how he does it so you can do it yourself? Yeah, shut her up. <laughs> and uh, that's my perspective. Is that anybody could do it. If, if this guy could do it, Ammonia can do it, and any Cree person can do it. It all depends on your commitment and how committed you are. How willing? How much time do you, are you willing to spend in in your in your field? And it's just like Frida Henneke. If she had not been so committed. And, and saving the language, her publications wouldn't be out there. And there's a lot of publications that she did. And uh, you could look into Cree. You could look into Cree language videos. No, the other one, Cree Literacy Network. Go in there, look for Frida Henneke. Do a search on Frida Henneke. And and uh, my colleague Arden has listed all the stuff that she's done. That Frida Henneke has done. So you could see what kind of work she's done. You know, then somebody had to do that to provide that material. I guess we need that material because that's basically all anything anybody has for resources. They can't go leave this room here and go start st- talking language right around us, right? They can't leave a classroom, a Cree language classroom, and go into a Cree speaking community. That's just not possible right now. But they can leave the classroom after getting getting some instruction on how grammar and how to pronounce words, go home and do their own work and come out and say, I'd like to tell you a story, Solomon, but it'll be in Cree. And say, Yay, let's hear it. You know, that can be done. That can be done. It can happen. That's why I think resources are so essential to work on. I've been lucky in my life. I've had people who have encouraged me to do my work. And things like and people like Gina Gamasis and uh, and the late, and Stan Cathan, the late Stan Cathan, and the late uh, Ahab Spence. And Ahab Spence told me, if you want to work in this field, be prepared to stand alone because people are going to try to tear you down, trying to discourage you from writing the language. It's going to be like that. 
And this is what he told me back in the 80s. And this is what I found. This is what Lynn is talking about. Forever trying to tear it down our work for what we do. You know. But we must persist. My mentor, my mentor has told me, keep going, keep doing what you're doing. Both stand. And they have told me to just keep on doing what they And also Jean tells me to just keep on doing. Because people are going to say, we don't write our language. We shouldn't be writing our language. It's not, it's not the Cree way. I tell them, we shouldn't ride, drive our cars. It's not the Cree way. We shouldn't ride the airplanes. It's not the Cree way. That, that was a silent swear word, by the way. Right? Just, you know. But this is the attitude that we're facing with. You know, People are telling us we shouldn't write Cree because it's not the Cree way. And, um, but uh, I tell them, okay, fine. Get rid of your cars. Get rid of everything that, you're, that is convenient for you to survive in this world. In this day and age, we need to be able to write our language so we can make sure that, it's, that our language is there for the next generation. And uh, make sure that the stories are there for the next generation. Especially when you look at the stories that have been collected in the past, a lot of the stories have been really messed up because the people who spoke the language weren't uh, the people who were collecting them didn't speak the language, so they really didn't know what was going on behind the behind the stories. So we need people who speak the language and know another stories to bring those stories back, because those stories have the culture that we need to know, to learn. And if they're both written in English and in Cree, so much the better. And um, so, so it's nice to see what Frida had done with her her stuff, you know. And uh, it's nice to see other publications like people wanted to write Cree, their poems into Cree, right? Like this stuff here. It's nice to see that. And, uh, and uh, you know, like I encourage that kind of stuff and there's more and more being done. And uh, I think that it's shifting around rather than people saying we shouldn't be writing Cree. They're saying, let's write Cree, but let's do it properly. You know, it just really needs where we come in. And uh, so things are looking up in that way. And I mean, uh, the 17 year old doing this, wanting to do this in Cree, I think that was a real, real good, good thing. You know, like Jewel, Jewel Charles doing this stuff and wanting to do it in Cree. I think that's a really good sign that students are wanting to learn, wanting to write. You know, so so there is hope. It's been discouraging a lot of times, but there is hope. There's three language sources. Cree language sources is another page, and Cree morphology is a wonderful page, and uh, and so there's all the Cree speakers uh, who are teaching out there are doing stuff like this online. There's lots of help online to be able to do this. Even the dictionaries are online. New instructors that are coming in. They need people to guide them. They need mentors to keep on teaching. Like I had, I had mentors all the way through, and uh, and I've seen. I, I've been teaching since the mid '80s, and I have seen teachers come and teachers go because the teachers who are speak or teaching in the schools get discouraged because they meet with opposition like Lynn was talking about they meet with that kind of opposition so they give up and move on to something else you know so they have to keep at it and understand that they're going to be running into problems at all times and uh, but it's worth staying put and do what you need to do you know so and you are going to no matter what you do no matter where you go you're going to meet with opposition and so if they could find somebody who could mentor them all uh, as they begin teaching, that is wonderful. And uh, that's the only way I survived. Otherwise, I, I wouldn't have kept on going had these three people not encouraged me to do so. Uh, in Cree also, is we have different dialects. I'm a TA speaker working in Y dialect. So I get 
flack from Y speakers telling me I shouldn't de be teaching Y dialect. And I get flack from TS speakers, I shouldn't be teaching. <laughs> <laughs> aye, aye, aye. You know, like, like I have these publications. I have them matching the here we win. This is in the Y dialect, all right? It's just what we teach here. So it had to be in the Y dialect. So I had to put that in the TS dialect. And where's the other one that I have in there? Okay, there's a Cree language story. Where at the bottom? Yeah. So this publication is in the Y in the Y dialect. This publication is in the TS dialect. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, hmm. So I get flack. Predominant, predominant materials are in the white dialect. And uh, and when I'm asking to do things, uh, I, I ask, what do you want? Which side do you want? You know. And in creative language literacy, what we've been doing there lately is we've been putting both TH and Y dialect stuff of the same thing. And so we did it out in the last couple of years and, uh, and it's been really effective. If we could do that, great. If more and more people are interested in publishing stuff in the language and uh, in all languages, not just Cree. You know, like I've seen Nakoda publications this year. Uh, Nakoda text came out in this year. And we see some solo publications. Lynn's, Lynn's textbook is going to come out this year or maybe next year. It depends on the publisher. So that'll be the Nakoda stuff coming into play. So there's more and more stuff in languages are coming out. And it's good to see. That was in 1979 or something like that. And we had something like this. An intensive course in Cree. This was the only Cree available stuff coming into play. And, uh, and we have stuff like this. Uh, her husband was mad at... She was mad at her husband, so she hit him over the head with a frying pan. So she looked at this I said, I'm going to write my own textbook. <laughs> this book is very heavily Christian oriented and uh, very uh, misogynistic in a lot of ways. You know, so Jean Ogmasis went ahead and wrote Cree language other plays to offset this. And so as soon as that was written, we threw this out. And uh, but I still keep it around for a good laugh. <laughs> That's it <laughs> of the language materials in, in all these years. That's just wonderful. Like in 1973, in the area of language publication, it was nothing, hardly anything there. 1973, ah, Half Breed came out, right? You know, and if you look at uh, indigenous publications prior to 1973, you'll see that it's very dry, very dry spell. After 1973, more and more, more and more and more came out. Now here we are in 20, 20, 2020, and it's all this stuff <laughs> you wouldn't be able to see this. All this pile of books back then. In Cree, most of them are in Cree.